Um, why are prices so high? I think that the root of inflation is actually in the disruption that we saw during COVID. But clearly, a, you know, a range of things have happened since then. You've just mentioned the war in Ukraine that's sparked really high prices in uh, in grains and also in oils and and really significantly in energy. So I think we were already starting to pay more. Well, more than a year ago, uh, you know, we're now in actually our fourteenth consecutive month of food and drink price inflation. But various things that have happened since then have certainly accelerated the situation. And you know, our member companies are just seeing really relentless price rises now across the board of their inputs. So that's ingredients, it's raw materials, it's energy, it's also the cost of imports because of the relative weakness in the pound. Are the supermarkets doing enough themselves? We know that Iceland, for instance, is, is one of the companies that have actually tried to help people with uh, a low interest loan scheme on, on, on their sort of food shopping card. And they've got a, a one pound range of food stuffs. I think Asda are doing a, a deal for pensioners where they can get soup and a roll for one pound. Are others following suit? I think, you know, I think across the board, retailers and food manufacturers are doing everything they can to contain food price inflation. You know, we know we have a responsibility to keep food affordable. And you'll see, you know, across the range of food manufacturers, you'll see companies cutting back on investments. Uh, you'll see them cutting back on product lines uh, in some places. You'll see them really driving their energy efficiency. You'll see cutbacks in, in, in marketing and other internal budgets. But I think there are there is just a limit to, to what you can do. At the end of the day, the companies in our food manufacturing sector, you know, they, they do, you know, they can't operate at a loss. They have to remain as viable businesses. You know, their borrowing costs have gone up, for instance. And so, and so they're managing that as well. So I think everybody is doing everything that they can. But in the, in the inflation figures that you see today, clearly it's just not possible to protect consumers from all of the price rises that, that manufacturers and retailers are experiencing. And Karen, final question. Are there any staples that haven't gone up in price? Any advice to families about how you can still feed a family without those rocketing prices? You know, we see milk, uh, cream, for example, really strikes me every time I go in. But are there things that are still affordable? I think, I mean, prices have gone up broadly across the board. There are 49 categories of of food and drink that the, the official statistics are based on, and 38 of those uh, of those products have now gone up in double digit figures. So the price rises are are broadly uh, across the board. It is really hard, I think, for food and drink manufacturers uh, to keep the cost price rises out of particular categories of food. I mean, what I would say is that there is more that we think that government could do, you know, clarity in economic policy making is obviously really important. I think some of the political and economic stability or instability of the last uh, few weeks has made operating for companies quite a lot harder indeed, and made quite life quite a lot harder for their employees as well, who have mortgages and, and who are noticing, as you say, the rising costs of living. I think there's more certainty that government can give us around energy support and indeed what will happen if there are disruptions to energy supply over the winter. And I think there is regulatory reform that the government could do that would help uh, manufacturing companies, that would help retailers take the costs out of some ordinary uh, everyday foodstuffs.